We are live. And we're live. Okay. Good morning. Good morning uh, to you all. Thank you once again for joining and attending GMBC Saturday Sunday School. We are definitely uh, proud to have you attend uh, here with us and learn the word of God. Um, I would like to open up uh, this morning Sunday school um, lesson and worship uh, with a prayer. If anyone who's uh, joining us right now, um, we will be willing to uh, open us up with a quick prayer and before we go into and start our lesson. I can pray if you would like. Thank you, Reverend Hardy, please. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we want to say thank you. We say thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you will do. But Lord, as we look around and you didn't do anything else for us, we still are so thankful. Lord, you've just blessed us with so many different things as we as we are entering into your birthday season. Father, we just say thank you for you coming into this world and most of all dying for us. Lord, we, we want you to just bless, bless in a special way. Lord, touch our Sunday school today. Lord, just give us what we need. We know that you do that anyway, but Lord, you take care of our wants also. So right now, all we can say is thank, thank you, Lord. All we can do is have a thank, thankful heart. Lord, bless our church. Bless the people that has joined in on Facebook as well as Zoom. We're asking you to just have your way in our lives, Lord, creating us a clean heart so that we can serve you. Open up our minds and our hearts so that we can receive this lesson today. I'm asking you to touch Reverend Davis in a special way, touch our pastor in a special way. And Lord, we'll be so grateful for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Hardy, um, for that excellent prayer. Thank you so much. Today's lesson, um, we're, we're gonna talk about a, a generous heart, a generous heart, a generous heart. Um, scripture and book of Nehemiah says, we also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops and of every fruit tree. That is Nehemiah 10 verse 35. Now, uh, I'm at, I want to pose to you word generous, the word generous, the, it is defined as showing a readiness to give more of something as money or time than is strictly necessary or expected. And the lesson is generous heart. And the definition of generous is on the screen and has been defined for you. Um, I will read again, showing a readiness a readiness to give more or something as money or time than is strictly necessary or expected. So a generous heart, when you have a generous heart, you do more than what's expected. You give more than what's necessary. And so how many of us can honestly say that we are generous or have a generous heart? And I mean this wholeheartedly and in its totality when you do things for people you love it's out of love it's out of the fact that you have that relationship with that person it's out of the mere fact that that person means something to you and so yes you can be generous to somebody you love but generous it says showing a readiness a readiness and when, if, when you're ready you don't got to get ready that mean at any point when generosity is to be displayed or is to be shown, you are ready to do that. And you are ready to do it by any means necessary, by giving up your time or of your money.
are you are you emotional, seasonal, or generous? Are you emotional, seasonal, or generous? Let me explain. If if you are emotional, then I don't, I don't know how many of you all saw those commercials that say for just 10 cents a day or just a dollar a week, you can feed this kid. They can have clean water. They won't be, and you see that commercial and it does something to you. It touches your emotion and it stirs up something in you to make you want to give because it touched on your emotion. Uh, something happened, a tragic situation happened to someone that you are aware of and it makes you want to do. Someone passes away and, and they have no money for the funeral service, no monies to be buried, no monies to take care of some kids who are now left motherless or fatherless. And so because of that situation, it has pushed you, your emotions to do, to give. That's uh, emotional. Seasonal, seasonal. We in the season right now. It's a, here's the season, and the song goes, here's the season to be jolly. And so this time of year, everybody team seems to be more giving than usual. Everybody seems to be more cheerful than usual. Everybody seems to be more understanding in terms of gift giving than usual because it is the Christmas season. It is a it, it, it's it, it's a seasonal thing. And then why how, how you know that, Reverend? That's what you the lights goes up and trees goes up and wish lists are given and Santa Claus is talked about and cookies and milk are left. I mean, it, it, it's seasonal. So are you emotional, seasonal, or generous? If you're generous, then you're already ready, always ready to give of your time, of your money, of your talents. If you're generous and have a generous heart. If you have a generous heart, it will always be ready to be generous. You won't need to be pushed by emotion. It don't matter what season it is because you are naturally generous. What, what is the connection between tithing and worship? This is open for discussion as always. What is the connection between tithing and worship? It's, it's uh, I believe it's Malachi 10, 31. If someone can go to that and read that for us. the connection between tithing and worship. Reverend Davis, I have Malachi 3 and 10, yes. bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And that's from the King James. Thank you, Malachi 3 and 10, thank you. Thank you. Bring ye all into my storehouse. This is this is a direct <laughs> commission to God is telling us what to do, what he expects of us. And we ask, what's the connection between tithing and worship? I was once told that if you haven't tithed, you haven't worshiped. And if you worship, you have to tithe. And so the two goes hand in hand, tithing and worship. You haven't fully worshiped unless you've tithed. 
Reverend Davis, may yes. I add? Pastor often says, if you want to see what a person truly loves, look at their checkbook and their calendar. Mm. So you can't say you love the Lord if you're not giving him your time, your talent, and your money. Mm. You know, mm. that, that is a, you're going to support what you love. And you're going to support it with all that you have. So, you know, as Pastor says, look at the calendar, look at the checkbook. Yeah, amen. And the connection between tithing and worship. If you, if you, if you, if you are a full blown worshiper, you won't have a problem tithing. If you are a full blown worshiper of the Lord, you won't have an issue tithing. And so everything that we have comes from the Lord anyway. And so it just makes sense to give it to who gave it to us. And so why do you think it's a problem for a lot of Christians when it comes to tithing? It's not a problem to dress up, to go to church, to sing the hymns, to shout glory, hallelujah, to say preach pastor, to say go ahead, to say take your time, and then when it's time for offering, you, you, you got to go to the bathroom. Why is it a problem when it comes to tithing, us incorporating that fully in our worship? And I'm not talking about just in the bulletin, and I'm not talking about when a preacher or the deacon gets gets up and say it's, it's, it's offering or it's giving time. I'm speaking personally. Why do we feel Christians have a problem tithing? And for the long time, I'll speak to my own self. I was a giver. I was not a tithe. I was a giver. So I wasn't fully engaged in worship neither because I wasn't tithing, but I was giving. But once I started giving, then that was a clear demonstration that my worship was for real and it was noticed by God. And then the, once I started tithing, then I became more blessed in terms of financial, <clears throat> financially because it was shown to God that I was able to be obedient in a form of tithing and my worship is for real. So I'm asking us as Christians, why do we feel that Christians or individuals have a problem that claim that they a worship is real, but have a problem with tithing? I think they don't have their priorities straight. I heard a lady say one time that after she paid her bills and her rent, she didn't have enough left to tithe. So, but if she had her priorities straight, she would have put God first. Mm. Amen. amen, Deacon Bates and uh, amen, Reverend Davis. I, I just wanted to share, you had asked the question. I think part of the challenge is too, to, to piggyback on Deacon Bates' point, is that um, fortunately, a lot of us espouse to religious practice. Mm. And we need to understand that Jesus didn't come for a religious practice. He came for relationship. Mm -hmm. And so many of us who attend church, we like to go through the practices and in, in the process of going through the practices that certain churches or certain religious groups aren't properly teaching the Bible. And they find that their giving sometimes may be not properly allocated or not allocated in a way that they think that the church should. And so they're giving to support an organization or an individual, not giving out of a relationship with God. Um, so to Deacon Bates' point, the priority is your relationship with God and with Jesus. And when you do that, then your heart would be in a right place to give. Because he did say, you know, where your uh, heart is, there your treasure will be also. So I just think people's priorities, to Deacon Bates' point, are in the wrong place of looking at the religious organization and not the relationship and what God has commanded us to do. Amen. 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 Reverend Samples, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, I, I have heard individuals say time and time again i'm not giving all my money to that church or i'm not giving my money just uh, to that pastor or uh, to that preacher and at the end of the day that's going back to what you said piggybacking what you said 
priorities. No, you're not. But going back to what you said even further, it's about relationships, it's not about a religion. So if you have a relationship with God, you know who you, whom you're giving your money to and you know why you're giving your monies. But because that relationship is non-existent and it's just religion there, you can't understand why are you doing or why you should do what you are commanded to do. Reverend Davis? Yes. I think also there's been a lack of understanding between tithes, offerings, and dues, because I can remember back in the days, uh, my younger years, we just paid money. You didn't really pay tithes. We, we just paid whatever you wanted to give. So I think maybe it could be a lack of understanding between you, uh, because some churches out here still pay dues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, this is why I, I believe that uh wholeheartedly um it just it just um blows um uh, my mind when when knowing how mind-blowing god is that he think i heard once a preacher my old preacher used to always say you know heaven never go go bankrupt so <laughs> he don't uh need your money but he is asking you to tithe and give a tenth of what he has blessed you with and a lot of someone just said that, well, once I pay my rent and once I, I, I have nothing else to give, going back to priorities, if you give God what's right, you always have enough left. And that's just the point blank bottom line. I can't explain it. Uh, I'm nowhere near smart enough, nowhere near understanding how God does what he do. But all I know is when you obey God, um, he will make sure you will have enough, not only left over for your own needs, <laughs> but plenty left over to give joyfully to others. Why is it important to be generous in sharing the gifts that God has given you? Why is it important? to be generous and sharing the gifts that God has given you. Can someone please go to Galatians 6 and 6? Galatians 6 and 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all things with him who teaches. That's Galatians 6 and 6. Mm -hmm. uh, another trend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another translation says when we generously and joyfully give of our resources, we are obedient to God. So, and in fact, we're, we're giving to God. Churches who take good financial care of their pastors and leaders bring joy to the heart of God. Why is it important to be generous and sharing the gifts that God has given you? Because God gave them to you to be a blessing. Everyone has, that's watching this, everyone that's on this call have a gift that God has given them. And he didn't give you that gift to not use it to be a blessing to others. God has equipped all of us with special gifts, unique gifts, with different gifts. Not to hoard, not to bottle up, not to keep for ourselves, but to give to others. It says clearly in word, it's a blessing it's better to give than receive. So my question to you again, why is it important to be generous and sharing the gift that God has given you? What do you think? Why do you think it's important? Or it may not be important. Why, do, why don't you think it's important? Reverend Davis? Yes. Of course, I don't think this is the only reason um, like that you will receive a reward. That shouldn't be the only reason why you do it. But it does say in the word, if you go back to um, Galatians, 
uh, six and seven, it says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. That's uh, Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Mm -hmm. So it says that the Lord will reward you for the yeah. good that you do. And that shouldn't be the only reason, but it does say it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, have you, you, you think about, the, and, and the Bible teaches us and tells us, it's better to give than receive, correct? It's better to give than receive. It's better to give than receive. Now, think about this. Think about the best gift you ever gotten and how it made you feel. Probably shocked, surprised, thankful, really filled. Now, think about the best thing that you have given or gave or gifted someone and how that made you feel. It made you feel better. I'm sure it should have. Us as men and women of God, because it teaches us it's better to give than receive for one. And then for two, we were able to be a blessing to someone. Whether it was expected or unexpected, God blessed us to be a blessing. And speaking for myself, it's no better feeling than knowing you were a blessing. So how does it make you feel knowing that you are a blessing? Think about times back in your mind, back in your life that you can recall that you know for a fact God had blessed you to bless someone else and how it made you feel. God blessed me. We're talking about a generous heart. I was just sitting up one evening and I said, it, it's, it's something that I have to do to help where I came from. Uh, I'm a graduate of Detroit Southeastern High School. And I said, it's something that I have to do to be able to help those students. Uh, I work at a different school. Um, my schedule won't allow me for, for time's sake to be there on a, <clears throat> regular or consistent basis so speaking back to our lesson a generous heart and we talked about generous showing a readiness to give more of something of money or time is strictly necessary when it's then it's strictly necessary or expected so i contacted the principal of southeastern and i i, I said you know uh it's been put on my heart that each year i want to give a graduating senior young man and young woman, a scholarship check. Uh, and at this time, I start off with $250 each. I gave each graduating senior a scholarship, not each, I'm sorry. I gave one graduating senior male $250 and one graduating senior female $250. Um, they had uh, minimum requirements um, to get it, but I was gonna make sure two graduating seniors from my old alma mater got it, okay? Uh, it was once told to me, it's a, it's, it's a poor frog that don't praise his own pond. And since that's where I came from, and then since I know how it is in that area, and I know how it is trying to go to school and, um, um, and, and funds limited or unavailable, every little bit helps. And so uh, the principal uh, was appreciative of it. Uh, we took on an ordeal, the task, uh, and I had done it uh, last year. And, you know, the kids were, the face is on them kids when I brought, when I brought them their check, their scholarship check, you know, directly, uh, cashier check issued out to them in their name um, to help them a little bit, maybe buy a few books or a few things for their dorms, whatever the case may be. Um, just the look on their face, uh, it made me uh, know that that was God led and God meant and God sent. And so I said, you know what, I want to do more. I want to do more. I don't got it like that, but God do. So let me be clear. So the following year, I said, I'm going to do $500 for each 
male and female graduate of my old alma mater. Uh, praise be to God, we was a lot. We was able to do that. We was able to do that. Uh, get five hundred dollars each to a one male and female graduate of my old alma mater. And then I said, you know what? I want to do even more. And so now each graduating senior uh, from male from the high school, I partner up with uh, Hot Sam's and they are sponsoring a suit for uh, a graduating senior from the high, uh, from the high school. Uh, brand new suit, just full tailor, everything, shirt tied, the whole works. And so we need to understand that it is important and it's imperative not only to have a generous heart, but to be always ready to give all of your time, of your money, of your talent, because God not only requires that of us, he wants that from us. And it's necessary for us as Christians to always show the God that's in us. And I'm sorry, Reverend Crummy, you had your hand up. Reverend Crummy, are you there? While we wait for her, Reverend Davis, um, Pastor Duckworth said it's always a blessing to give to others. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's always yeah. a joy to bless. Yeah, I'm glad uh, our pastor uh, greatly uh, believes that because he is uh, a true giver <laughs> and uh, a, a lot of our family <laughs> can attest to that. So, yes, yes, yes. Pastor A just talking. Yeah, that is a fact. Uh, it is a blessing to give to others. And uh, if we, you know, we being transparent and perfectly honest, I've been on both sides of the fence. Uh, I've been on the side of the fence where uh, I had to get from others and will hope I will be given from others. And then now the Lord has ascended me and, and, and blessed me to be able to give to others. And that's when the scripture really resonated in my spirit. <laughs> it's better to give than receive. I see Reverend Kermit back. Reverend Davis. Yes. It's Dr. Nelson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr. Nelson. Uh, one, of, one of the things I was always taught is when you have a heart to give and you give to others, it positions you to get more mm. so that you can be a continuous giver. And so um, your generosity speaks volumes. Um, in the times that we're living in. It's, it speaks volumes and it demonstrates to those students prayerfully to pay it forward. Yes. Uh, for what you're doing, that they will turn around and remember that in, in their time, somebody gave to them mm -hmm. and that they'll, and they'll become generational givers themselves. Yes. So that's, that, those are my comments. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. And, and, uh, People who are uh, sincerely uh, men and women and, and servants of God, uh, this is uh, this is their normal. This is their normal uh, being having a generous heart and uh, and being given. Um, it's just a part of their spirit. And you know, um, you know, Dr. Nelson, uh, she's definitely uh, falls under that umbrella and under that tree, um, speaking uh, transparent. When I I lost, uh, we 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 we, what did we, we went to Atlanta. We went took that church trip to Atlanta, and, oh. I, and I lost my wallet, my entire wallet. And um, I was just talking to Dr. Nelson and letting her know that I didn't ask for anything. And she um, she just blessed me and made sure that the whole time while we was remaining in Atlanta, like I didn't need or want for anything, and I didn't ask her nothing. She just did. Going back to generous, it says talk about showing a readiness. So she was ready. <laughs> and I'm thankful <laughs> to God that she was there. <laughs> it was an honor. 
It was an honor to do that because somebody somebody has blessed me before. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like not to have no food, not to have no shoes, not to have that many clothes, and somebody blessed my life. So I try to spend the rest of my life demonstrating to God I'm grateful for what God has allowed to be done for me through other people, mm. through other people. Yeah. Reverend Crummy, are you there? I am. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, God bless you. Um, I just want to go back because I'm thinking on how you originally asked a question. Mm -hmm. And we, we talk about, um, or we know as Christians that it's about relationship with God. That, that's mm -hmm. in most of the conversation this morning. So when you're in a relationship with someone, um, you expect them to pay attention to what you say and what you do. So if I tell you that I like chocolate cake and you give me everything but chocolate cake, that to me, that's saying you're not paying attention to my needs. Mm. And so if, if we're God's children, and he's telling us, and, and Reverend Sample says the, the Bible is the basic um, instructions before leaving earth. If God has given us those instructions and we're not following his instructions, then we're not doing or we're not in relationship with him because we're not listening and we're not following his instructions. So as Christians, he tells us we are to be givers. As Christians, he tells us we are to exhort one another. As Christian, he gives us the road that we are to walk. So if we're gonna be in relationship with him, then we need to be following that path. Mm. Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Crummy. Thank you, Reverend Crummy. And I want us to have a, have, a, have a broader look and perspective on, it says, what is important to, why is it important to be generous and sharing the gifts that God has given you? And when, when, when we look at that, word or 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 i don't say terminology but we always picture gifts as 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 as, as something um that everybody wants something that everybody desires i mean it's a gift it's a gift right so um my you all are familiar with me and and my and and a bit of my life and, and the story my sister was killed in fourth grade okay um Brother killed in eighth grade, mother killed in ninth grade, okay? Tragic death, all of them, okay? And so uh, as painful as that was at the time to have to live through that and experience that, I share that in uh, some settings where I was uh, called to or asked to speak uh, to some uh, young adults. And uh, lastly, at a uh, detention facility, um, for a young man ages from 18 to 24 and I had two um, crying and asking is it a way that they can keep in contact with me because they thought that their life was so jacked up and then <laughs> hearing my story they said whoa that's and, and, and he was able to make it through that and so now the gift and sharing that story it was a gift to them having them realize that you know what my life ain't that bad. I still got a chance. I will make it. I'm going to make it. And it's all because of me sharing with them a portion of my life and how God has elevated me in my life and what God has brought me through in my life. And so now the gift is that they're seeing their life differently. They're understanding that they can make something of their life. That, that God is real. So let's think broader when we talk about in terms of gift and gift giving. Because gifts, it ain't just what's under the tree wrapped up in a pretty bowl with your name on it. Gift is something that is used to help change the trajectory of someone's life. And that's why I say, just telling you my story, that's why I say all of us have a gift. Do we have any questions 
about today's lesson of or comments or brief testimonies. Notice I said brief testimonies. There are a couple of comments um, in the chat. I'm not sure if you saw them. Mm -mm. Pastor Duckworth said, closed hands won't lose much, but won't gain anything either. And uh, Reverend Samples commented that you can neither receive what you are not willing to give. And then he also said, if you love me, obey my commands. Speaking of God. And I don't believe there are any comments on Facebook. At that. Yeah, and, and, and that's true. And our pastor, he is so elegant in the way he put things. It's just unbelievable. It's just, I get impressed time and time again. And I've been knowing him for a little while. Um, but also, um, if, if, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and, 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 and that's in the Bible. And so it says, if you believe, you should receive whatever you ask for in prayer, right? It's a funny story, but true. And so I prayed to God for patience. So I learned from this prayer that for now, I'm specifying my prayers. I just, I just prayed to God for patience. And then he made me an administrator of an elementary school. So now I'm dealing with kindergartens, first graders, second graders, third graders, all doggone day. So uh, I said, you know what? I, I, I see God has a sense of humor. So from here on out, I specify my prayer. Whether God will do it or not, it's totally up to him. But I am not leaving no room for a misunderstanding. If no more comments, uh, no more questions, uh, I would like to thank you all for your time. It's always a pleasure to be here with you on this Saturday morning for Sunday school. I really enjoy myself. I hope you got something out the lesson as I was blessed to be able to present it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Davis, for that message from your heart. That was really a true, awesome, awesome message that generously, generously given from your heart. Your heart is, is what really makes us. Our heart is tell us how we should spread God's word. And in the heart, that's why we love each other. That's why we care about each other. I can tell many stories too about my life and giving. The more you give, the more you receive. And thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to be able to share this about a generous heart. At this time, we're going to have Dr. Nelson to come and speak about our NAIC lesson that coming up. And after that, we're going to have Sister Judy Yates to close us, close us out in prayer. And before you do that, Pastor, we would like for you to say something in regards to the um, celebration of the season. You want me to go now? Yes, please. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, we just like to say um, to everyone, uh, God's blessings upon you as we are celebrating um, the season. In reality, as Christians, we don't necessarily need to end the year to begin to do things. <laughs> it is our prayer that we're doing things throughout the year, and it just may be a little extra you do um, at this time of the year um and uh definitely enjoy each other enjoy your family and just remember um that this time of the year is not pleasant for everyone and so while we enjoy our joys we also want to have a heart of sympathy and i say this because i got word last night that one of my students um uh, one of my doctoral students passed yesterday and so it has been on my heart um, so the heavy last night, as well as this morning, when I had to share uh, with his with his colleagues um, that he had passed, and we had to try to take time to uh, Dr. Simon and I, the the, the uh, director of the Demand Program, we had to spend some time just sort of talking, and it brought up some things for her as, as a widow, and she was just sharing how this time of the year is tough for her, 
And um, yeah, it's just the, uh, you know, it's 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 odd how things work. Uh, I had to talk to Dr. Owens this week who had just lost uh, his wife a couple of weeks ago and um, the pastor or the, or the preacher who passed was one of his preachers. <clears throat> and so it's, it was, it's, it's, it's a tough time, but you know, um, we thank God for God's grace. Just want everyone to, you know, count your blessings, uh, be a blessing, and, and that's one sure way to stay blessed is to 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 intentionally be blessings to other people. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, all of us will sort of take on the mantle of, of also playing it back. I know I give uh, to, you know, my alma maters as well. Um, and I target um, African-American students, you know, to receive the benefits of, of what I give. Um, uh, you know, you just have to be intentional and most of the time I never meet these students, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I'm giving it so the Lord would be a blessing because I said, you know, I want to stay blessed. <laughs> and the only way to stay blessed is to empty out your blessings. So um, the Lord will always uh, let it go forth. So again, um, hearts a little heavy this morning, of course, but just keep me um, in your prayers and just know that, that we love all of you all and, and, and pray that you all will enjoy um, the worship tomorrow and um, looking forward to uh, seeing you all tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Um, again, good morning to everybody. And I do um, thank God for this day and for being here to share it. Um, our closing lesson for this year, a lesson on generosity. Uh, God has always positioned us to receive the word right when we need it. And what a time for us to understand what it means to be generous to others um, that in this Christmas season. Um, we were, I have been taught for so many um, years that this is a season of miracles and new beginnings. And so as we look around and we see all that's going on, all of the things happening in our world, my prayer is that you keep looking until you see the hand of God at work. Um, I know we talk about all of the stuff that's going on, but see the miracles that's happening. See how God is still moving because God is still in control. And with that being said, we're going to be coming off of this lesson that we've had um, these past few weeks going into our next um, session at the beginning of the year. We, God bless uh, GMBC this year to have um, two resident authors, um, Reverend Davis and Reverend Samples. And so uh, rather than go out and find somebody else's book, when the Lord blesses you with your own to have their own books, what a wonderful way to start off the year than by using the material that God has given to them. And so what we're going to be doing is um, uh, Reverend um, Davis uh, wrote a book called One minute meditations and so he's going to be um kind of opening up with one of his meditations um during our lessons and then reverend samples we're going to be teacher partnering with him as he um teaches his book on we teach his book on stewardship and at the beginning of the year god is laying the platform for us to learn what it means to be generous and to be good stewards with that which God has blessed us with. And so for those of you that are listening to us uh, uh, um, in our Facebook um, um, classroom and those of you that are on Zoom, we want you to get your hearts and minds ready because I believe that God is getting ready to do even more powerful things through this Saturday Sunday School um, as we present um, Reverend Samples and Reverend Davis to bring us our lessons. Um, I believe that I open do the introduction to the lessons. Is that right, uh, Dean Carter? Do I open this one up? Nope. Y'all ain't gonna let me open it up, but that's all right. <laughs> no, no, but so be but you, but you are teaching in it though. I'm going to be teaching it. Hey, well, that's good enough for me. Um, so be ready at the beginning of the year for us to enter into a time, first off, learning what it means to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with. That, again, positions us. If we handle what God has given us the way God desires, 
God to continuously give us more because he knows we know what to do with what he blesses us with. God bless you. Thank you. And have a wonderful, blessed holiday. Uh, I'm on my way to Omaha in about 24 hours. So you all be blessed and have a wonderful Christmas. Deacon Carter. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Well, we look forward to for an awesome new year coming up. At this time, we're going to have Sister Judy Yates to lead us out in prayer for 2021. Shall we pray? Most holy and righteous Father, it's in the name of your darling son, Jesus, that we come. Thanking you for this powerful lesson today prepared by this teacher, teaching us the word generosity, generous, to give more than what is expected of our time, our money, and our talents. Heavenly Father, we just ask that we take what was learned today and that we use it to build your kingdom here on earth so that we may have a relationship with you and that we might bring others into that fellowship. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone who joined today, those on Zoom, those on the various social media platforms, that they may go forth and share this word also. We ask that you keep us, lead us, and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Deacon Carter, may I say one word before we yes. get to Amen. Um, the Seminary Missionary Baptist Church is having a community drive by and pick up Christmas dinner today, Saturday, December the 18th, from 1 until 3 p.m. at 29066 Eaton Street, Westland, Michigan. If you want to place an order, uh, we do have a flyer on our Facebook page from our church family to your family at home, to your church family, we'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a very happy, prosperous new year. God bless.